singer named Justin Moore. We don't do a whole lot of bullshitting up here. We just get up here and play country music. Hey, what's up, everybody? Justin Moore here. Welcome back into the Justin Moore podcast. I'm coming to you live from Poen, Arkansas. We were supposed to come to you live from uh, the beach, but uh, we'll get into why we didn't have the opportunity to, to record uh, down there with the band, as we kind of alluded to last week. But uh, before we get into everything, I want to obviously welcome in uh, my partner in crime here, tour manager of one of my best buddies in the world jr how are you brother hey hey what's up everybody how about it podcast world i'm good brother good to be home uh enjoyed this past weekend like you said getting to see uh some of our band and crew guys didn't get to record a podcast might have we like we were talking about it you said you had a great way you put it was we forgot how much work our work really was <laughs> i mean yeah, you know, I, I think the fact we – so for those out there listening and watching, we were – it was a little different because, um, A, we did acoustic shows. We did three acoustic shows in, what, five, six days, something yeah. like that. And uh, they were all fairly close to where Jr. and I have places down there where he lives full time, but I have a place down there near him. And, and so we were kind of using – our my beach house and his to some extent as our kind of hubs and so our sleep schedule was a little wackier than normal maybe we should have done it different we were just trying to get any beach time in we could you know yeah. so for instance for example we would play a show at night we would come back home late at night and it may be a two-hour ride on the bus and then you're if you did go to sleep your sleep was interrupted and then we were leaving again at like nine the next morning. And so yeah. in hindsight, it might not have been the best way to go about it. Like I said, we were just trying to get some stuff done. and uh, yeah. But we had a great run of shows, and yeah. uh, we'll get into um, to those specifically uh, yeah. and as you didn't well. Even, and you didn't even get that when we let, we have to go ahead and hit him one more time while we're while we, while we <laughs> throwing him under yeah, the bus really. Our illustrious bus driver of our normally our band bus, uh, Brian Uzzle, my brother. Love him to death. Love it's him. Just, not a better human being on the planet. No. But like but, me, honestly, <laughs> it's just a little scatterbrain, to be yeah. honest. And he showed up. Uh, he calls me. He's supposed to be picking Justin up at 11 o'clock the night before. We were going to the first night. We were going to have a full day down at the beach. I was going to pick the guys up from the airport in Pensacola. And uh, – our guitar player, Josh, said, have you heard from Brian? I was like, no, but Justin, uh, they worked it out. I think y'all are going to leave at 11. Well, then about 10 minutes to 11, Brian calls me. Uh-oh. I was like, what? <laughs> He's like, I think I read my calendar wrong. He said, I thought Justin said tomorrow. I'm supposed to be there right now, aren't I? I was like, yeah, you should have been there like eight hours ago and already been to bed and back up ready to go. I was like, where are you? He's like, I'm in Mississippi. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. So yeah. he's like, I'm on my way. Yeah, but, he's uh, he's been great for us for a long time. He's been with us, I don't know, eight, nine, ten years or something. Yeah, and uh, he's a he's a great dude, great driver. He just he burned you uh, a day at the beach. Uh, so he is not yeah, high on the he, list this week. So I gave him a bunch of crap, and he goes, yeah. "Man, he goes, I was scared to death last night when I called you." And I was like, "Well, I wasn't thrilled," but he goes, "Man, you couldn't have been nicer." I go, "Well, I missed a." perfect opportunity to be an asshole yeah right <laughs> but no i would never do that i'm just no. kind of kidding uh, and it then, was an honest mistake and yeah so it was, it, and then, but we left we left a day late so that was right. going to be maybe our day to do the podcast down there because we yeah. were so busy the rest of the days but right. it is what it is i got we got some stuff accomplished got yeah i got some siding issues that we got figured out and some yeah. different things so i know that i know one of like you said the sleep interrupted yeah i tried to stay up and by then and then you get back and you got to get your stuff off but remember one of those mornings we, or nights we got back and you had been asleep for a little while and i was waking you up and you i was like i know you i, I didn't want to but i knew i was like i got to give him the option dude do you want to <laughs> sleep here and wake up yeah. on the bus later or do you want to get up now and go on in the house and sleep in the bed you thought about it hard because you were comfy but you you, and, you did did the right thing probably getting up going on in. Yeah, I mean I will say too um, at, when we're talking about sleep, I don't know. I've always slept great on a bus because you know you and I have spent more time sleeping on a bus over the last what 
13 years or 14 yeah. years, whatever it's been, than we have at home in our beds. And I usually absolutely love it, but I don't know if it's having a year of not doing it or if it's my mattress on the bus compared to mine at home. And now I've just gotten used to that one or something. But man, I, I went to bed at like midnight last night because uh, we were traveling home last night. And I didn't go to sleep till like five this morning. And I kept rolling around and every time I'd I'd roll onto one one side, my shoulder would like just hurt like crazy. And then I'd roll over the other one and it hurt like crazy. I'd try to get on my stomach, I'd try to get on my back. I just I couldn't go to sleep. So it's gonna take a little getting used to. So there were a number of reasons we didn't um we didn't end up doing a band cast as we call it, but it was good to catch up with everybody. It was good to play yeah. music and um you know the shows were smaller than we're accustomed to yeah um and we didn't have the whole band we just had a couple of guys but man i thought the crowds were great um and you know everybody is still handling this pandemic in their own way shape or form yeah uh but i tell you what for me um personally to have the opportunity to go out there and play to to folks and just to be quite honest with you and i know some of you don't agree with this but just no masks and yeah, just like florida it was just so normal i mean florida uh, and, was florida which was, was just kind of awesome to to see and you know i know this vaccine is is a lot more accessible now than even it was at last time or this time last month and i think it's just getting better and better and 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 we've talked about it on here uh, there are going to be some some casualties still to our our show uh, bookings as we go along, but I've, we're seeing a lot less of them on on a weekly slash you know biweekly monthly basis. And look forward to uh, uh, getting back out there. We're hoping in July, really, kind of a little more frequently. I think you're going to see, as I've spoken about a number of times, some still some socially distanced type things. But I think that's going to continue um, to to change for the better as we progress this year. And this, to 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 wrap a bow on it, uh, this run uh, was, I think, uh, an example of why I believe that to be accurate. You know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm with you. I enjoy just getting to be able to get back out and see people having a good time. You know, um, I, I got to see a, a ton of my buddies and fraternity brothers and friends while we were in, um, you know, we did the first show down in Sanford, Florida at the barn. Shout out to them down there. That was a, uh, that's a honky tonk down in Florida. Uh, I mean, just basic club days back to remind us when we got there back to the club days, but Hey, it was fine. It was, it, had a good party there and then Dothan Alabama at the plant cool very cool venue I'd never been to not far south of Troy where I went to college and um, had, a, had a great crowd there it was outdoors it's kind of like I think it's a, a former Coca-Cola bottling plant so it still had the walls up around they put an amphitheater or you know a stage in the middle and uh, it, that was really cool shout out to uh, Steve Hodge uh, Todd Moat Derek Cotton Lee Hussey uh, Pate Harrison, all my buddies I saw. Got my Tyler Transport hat on today, little buddy. Wore that one for you. Uh, got to see those guys in Dothan and their kids, which is crazy that my buddies all got kids and have grown kids and, you know, this and that. But uh, but very cool venue. Great promoter. Uh, I want, I, I'm sure we'll be back there at some point. And then um, – and then yeah, and then we got back to the, to the uh, the Redneck Riviera, the mecca of SEC beach leisure, the world famous Floor Bama on Sunday, which was yeah, uh, as expected, great crowd, fun. You know, shout out. Uh, speaking of that, shout out to Jeff Oliver, our production manager, for going in the Floor Bama that day and helping dime in their new PA we just got in the tent stage out there. He had it rocking. So hey, he you. did a great job, but I will say he was like a kid in a candy store. That's right up yeah. his alley. He eats oh, yeah. it up and. Uh, he, he, he's just so excited to work, man. He just wants to work, which I love it. And he does a great job for us and always has. And, and he helped them out. But just to, again, to, to, to reiterate, all the promoters were great to work with. Um, all of the staff everywhere was great to work with. And the fans were awesome. Uh, I want to thank all of you guys and gals who came out and, and, uh, 
again, made us feel a little bit normal. And yeah. uh, maybe maybe we did a little bit of the same for you guys. It was good to, you know, there's we we've we've gotten used to this world of Zoom and and all these kinds of things, and there's just no replacement for human interaction and gathering together and and celebrating a common thing that we all love, such as music or sports yep. or whatever. And it, it was good for the soul, man. For me, yeah. I know it really yeah. was. Yeah, and for me, and you know, and, and another thing too, you you realize, you know, you, being around other bands and other people that are in our business, because a lot of times it's hard to talk with your. If somebody doesn't do what we do, it's hard to really talk about the things that goes on. It's hard to really comprehend how it all works. But uh, you know, I yeah. got I got uh, shout out too to all of our openers uh, along the weekend. Uh, Lucas Hogue was with us for a few shows. Yeah, Blaine he was Rudd, great. Uh, Bruce Smelly, Ryan Dyer. Shout out to a bunch of great bands and. Uh, front men and um it was good to see some talk shop basically i guess you know we hadn't got yeah. to do that it, you normally we do that you know we always have an opener or two or we're on a bill somewhere at a festival and you see other bands but i mean we hadn't even talked to our our own band much much less than any of the rest so right. that was cool for me to get back in the the environment of live music and why we fell in love with this and why we decided to make careers out of something most people don't you know right it, we, you know and we discussed it i think even this past week is whether you're in JR's position or my position or a band member's position or any crew member's position, we all kind of have our own language, you yep. know, which is kind yep. of cool and for lack of a more intelligent term, it's, it's pretty neat. Um, and we just haven't had a lot of that. Uh, that's one thing I've enjoyed most about this podcast, you know, is yep. it's kind of given us a little bit of that, a taste of that. But again, there's no... There's no denying that being there in person and, and talking to folks is is you know on a different level of of enjoyment, fun, et cetera. So anyway, thanks again. And if you came to one of those shows, we appreciate it, and hopefully you enjoyed it as much as uh, we did. Yeah. But uh, the other thing, Jr. Yeah, the other thing that we got to talk to um, uh, the folks about is. Uh, something we talked about with our our previous guest last week, which by the way, I want to thank Kevin Nagandi again for Absolutely. for coming on. He was great, such a well spoken, articulate guy, nice guy, um, and super talented. Great story. Uh, I want to get him back on at some point, um, as we alluded to last week, because we could go way into his story and uh, how he got to the point he is we kind of touched on it a little bit we didn't have yeah. as much time with him as we would have liked but appreciate him once again for coming on and um he uh he had some good things to say about both our teams last week and what do you know uh we both made it to the semifinals of the sec tournament we got beat by lsu uh, we didn't play real well in that semifinal game but give LSU a lot of credit. They they played well. They're a, they're a really tough out. I think they got a chance to – when they play well and they play together as a team and they decide they want to play defense and rebound, they're as good as anybody in the country, in my opinion. It's just which version are you going to get of them. We got a good version of them in the semifinals, and yeah. and um, they ended up beating us in a pretty, pretty close game. Um, I think it ended up seven points or something. But I'm hopeful that uh, that will refocus our team. You know, you never want to lose, but sometimes, it, as a fan anyway, I don't know how the the coaches and players feel about it, but you almost – you, I think we had won 12 in a row at that point. I'm like, maybe we should lose before the NCAA yep. tournament. I don't know. Get it out of the way. They go on a six-game run, you know, yeah. But uh, moving forward, LSU played – your uh, your Crimson Tide in the finals, and y'all won your first SEC tourney title since was in '98 or something like no, that. No, like '80. <sighs> oh, okay. Yeah, maybe 80. I'm thinking a regular season title. Yeah, because you remember, we, yeah, regular season title was maybe '01, '02. I think we did somehow, and uh, but no, remember we were talking about it. it. We've only had a few ever. I mean, there's only been a handful outside of Kentucky ever. Really? Remember we, yeah. When we looked at the thing, I mean, they had just a dominant number on the sec tournament 30 something 30 yeah. something we've won one y'all have won i think that was y'all's fourth maybe 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 yeah 
third or fourth and third so or fourth. yeah i mean they've had a stranglehold obviously yeah <laughs> on the sec in particular the sec tournament but the sec as a whole uh, yeah for a long and, time but and for us to get there to play lsu um we uh, tennessee gave us all we wanted you know that was uh we got down and uh you know i Luckily, our shooting and leadership came through, and we played enough defense and got some breaks to to get it back and go ahead and and go play LSU. And then LSU had a chance to beat us there too. That was a, they gave us all we wanted too. So it was a hard yep. fought uh, tournament and SEC season. But uh, yes, uh, congrats to University of Alabama Crimson Tide. I couldn't be any happier. And uh, it was uh, <clears throat> hopefully it's a sign of things to come as we both move on into the bracket. We're going into yeah, that March Madness. We're dancing. Yeah, and I, if I'm not mistaken, we got six teams in. So, Alabama was a two seed. Um, Arkansas is a three seed. And by the time this comes out, we'll either be moving on or um, T- Tennessee oh, we're knocked a, out. Yeah, Tennessee is a five seed. Florida is a seven seed. Uh, I think LSU is an eight or a nine, and I think Missouri is an eight or a nine. Missouri is a nine seed. LSU is an eight seed. And so, good good luck yeah. to uh, all those teams, um, absolutely SEC teams, and um, and so I, I think it's going to be a fun tournament. We're a few days away from it, um, and man, this this may be the first time. Hell, I'm thinking about it now. If it ain't the first time, it's it's one of very few times since you and I have known each other that I, both of our teams are in the tournament. Certainly, the best teams we've had together. Yeah, in the absolutely, tournament. no doubt. I mean, there's no, no doubt, doubt about that. So it should be fun. Yeah. Um, we play Colgate. I know you guys play Iona. And speaking of owning the SEC, I do, I informed you of this yeah, just because I randomly heart. read it or heard it. But um, former great. Uh, Head coach for Kentucky, Rick Patino, who was also great at Louisville. He was also – he's taken four teams, which may be a record, to the NCAA tournament now, three of which he took to the Final Four. That's Providence, Kentucky, Louisville. And two of those he won won it with. So, um, that always – I don't know. It seems like every time – you. It's like, why do we get that draw? Why do we I'm get like, that guy? Let's play. I, that's what I said. I was like, oh, okay, we got this 15 C. We should be okay. And then Justin drops the bomb on me. Yeah, you know that's uh, where Rick Pitino <laughs> coaches down. I'm like, you, of course. And I he didn't is. know that until I heard it on TV or radio or something. I was like, oh, really? Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, and first time a 15 C so, ever wins a national championship. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you guys will be good. Yeah. But I was listening well, to you know because we're playing Colgate, which. I don't know a ton about. I've done a little research on, um, which I know won't surprise you, but oh, I I'm knew. ridiculous. Um, I knew. But they got they got, apparently they got really good shooters. They score the ball well. <laughs> they got one superstar that I'm uh, that I've read about. I forget the guy's name. Jordan something, I believe. Uh, so hopefully that's not a bad omen. Jordan <laughs> something. Jordan. Oh yeah, Jordan, right. See, yeah. Uh, but uh, I, I was listening to somebody, and I don't know if it was locally or nationally. They were talking about it, and I would apply this to you guys as well. There's a reason why we're the three seed, they're the 14, y'all are the two, and they're the 15. And we're supposed to win those games. Right. You know, I mean. Supposed to. Supposed to. And, you know, we all know crazy things happen in the in March Madness. But if if we both come out and play – I don't think we have to come out and play the greatest game we've played all year. But if we both come out and and do what we're supposed to do, defend the way we are supposed to, you know, all those things, rebound, the little things, fundamental yeah. things, we should both roll in the first round. And we'll be favored. I know in the first two rounds, y'all may be favored in the first three rounds, uh, assuming you keep moving on. So. Yeah, they've got us. They, I mean, it from the – Early brackets I've seen now, it looks like, yeah, us in Texas, they're seeing us squaring up. A lot of people are <clears throat> thinking Texas has got all, you know, going to give us all we want. They're long and big and, you know. That would be the, uh, that would be to go to the Elite Eight, maybe? That would be. Or to the Final Four or something like that. Yeah, no, that would be the Eight because they are. Yeah, because who's the number one in y'all's um, region? Um, Gonzaga. 
I mean, no, me, Mich- Michigan. Michigan, okay. And then yeah. we have the we have Baylor as the one. So if in we ours. beat Iona, and Texas beats Abilene Christian, and then they would have to beat the winner of <clears throat> BYU, Michigan State, or UCLA. And we'd have to beat the winner of UConn, Maryland, which, of course, two perennial powerhouses have right. to be the seven and ten seed this year, you know, right. for us. Our, I, uh, so that would be the Sweet Sixteen. We would play them in the Sweet Sixteen. Yeah, if that well, worked I, out. Hey, I, but, I, I, we haven't been to a Sweet Sixteen since ninety eight, ninety nine, something like that. So I'm like, if we can get to the Sweet Sixteen, and then you just never know what happens after that. No, no. You can get past the first weekend, then it's pretty much anybody's game. And we yeah. said, and, and Kevin agreed with us last week, Kevin Nagandi, ESPN. Um, I mean, uh, pro personality. Level. Could oh, have yeah. been more pro. He, I mean, it, he's inside he, out the yin-yang. He agreed with us that there's like 15 teams that can win this thing. So, if you yep. get to the Sweet 16, you, you, got, a, you got a shot, man. It just, yeah. it, And it only takes uh, four games to get to the Final Four. That's it. It's, I, that's it. That's you it. know, just six, get some, six, you're the champ. You got to get some breaks. But um, I, I, I was kidding with uh, with Jr. after they won the SEC championship the other day. I said, "Shit, man, y'all mess around and get good in in baseball. I mean, real good. Yeah, y'all, we ain't nobody ever gonna win nothing else. I guess. Yeah. In the SEC. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, and and y'all do have a newer staff. I think they've been there a couple of years, and yeah. we. We actually kick off the SEC season, you guys and us. Oh, really? What's the, the, when is that? This this coming weekend. So, oh, nice. And from what I understand, uh, you guys have some seriously good pitching this year. Yeah, yeah so, I've got a friend who works on the team, and I, you know, I don't keep up with it like you do, but I, 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 I will. I'll get amped up when we start getting busy with it. But um, yeah, he said he said we're looking good. We're young. But uh, we were twelve and two in our game the other day. I, I don't know if we end up winning or not. But we're, we're our overall record was twelve and two. And um, he said we, we he said we're we're gonna, we've got a good team. He said we're gonna well, surprise. Just stop people. it at, at this point. It's enough already. Y'all can't Wait. win everything. We can because I got to, so I can brag to Kevin's wife next time they come to a show <laughs> that we, y'all aren't the only, Florida's not the only one who can do it. You know. So that would be amazing. So yeah, good luck to both our teams and all of our mm-hmm. SEC brethren that are uh, going to make the uh, the dance this year. I uh, wish them all well. And everybody, you know, like we always say, I, I don't, I, I'm a, you know, I've got my teams in football that I just that Bama foes that I just don't like. And luckily, um, only Tennessee's in there, so I've got to pull for somebody I don't really like. But then the Ohio State, sorry Jeff, and the Michigans, uh, you know, I just. We go down that road one day, but uh, <laughs> but uh, I said this above everything. I just hope I don't want anybody to get hurt. No career any injuries. Let everybody get through healthy. I don't want a COVID outbreak. I don't want anything crazy to happen during the tournament. Everybody come out of this thing healthy and happy, and draft stock go up, and you know memories made and all that. So I wish all the guys and gals working uh, on the sidelines or on the court or in the whole tournament. Uh, and we talked about that. It's all going to be in Indy this year. Mm-hmm. They're doing every bit yeah, of it. It's in all- Indy. Yeah, and they're doing three different venues, um, three different venues. Uh, I believe Assembly Hall, which is where, and I could be wrong about this. I believe Assembly Hall, which is where Indiana plays, uh, who just fired their coach, by the way. And I've heard tell they want to come after Musselman, who's our coach at Arkansas. Just stay away. Yeah, stop. Uh, stop it. He's two years in here. It's not going to happen. Um and then um, where the Pacers play, we've played uh, the shows there. Bankers um, Life Fieldhouse is that or Bankers Field- Life Fieldhouse? Yeah, yeah we played and, there. And then um, the other, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, is if Butler's home court. I, I could be wrong, but gotcha. uh, uh, yeah, so it's different. And I've read on social media the last couple of days, you know, uh, in particular about Arkansas that. It, it's it's a whole different thing now. Like you know, you can't you can't leave your room at all except for practice. And I mean, so these guys, it's go, it's probably going to come down to who um, can deal with the circumstances. Yeah, navigates navigates the circumstances. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's just a whole different year. But you and I were discussing it the other day. It's just nice to your point. Hope everybody stays healthy, safe. Nobody gets injured you know it's fair games and um because 
you know, we didn't have this opportunity to watch March Madness last year, which is arguably the greatest, at least top three, four moments of the year in sports each year. Yeah. Um, and so, especially those first couple of days, it's Man, really special. It's so good. And so we didn't get that. So the last national champion, which sound or it feels like it was three, four years ago, was Virginia. Yeah. I don't even seem that seems like and forever no, it's, ago. It seems like forever ago. And and if you remember correctly, the year before they were the first one seed to ever lose to a sixteen seed. They'd go right, right back the next year and win it all. So That's right. That's right. I remember because I was texting our old merch, merch guy, Chris Fortune. He's a big Virginia guy. And I remember texting. I said, like, y'all got a good shot this year. Then they lost to the 16th seed. Yeah, so. He's like, never wish me well again, JR. <laughs> yeah, you put the voodoo on him. But yeah. uh, but anyway, yeah, it was awesome. Awesome yeah. weekend. Looking forward to this this tourney. And uh, and so hopefully you guys are as well. Hopefully your yeah. teams are, are in it. and. And uh, yeah, and play well and all that yeah. stuff. And we'll do some update next week, and we'll we'll stay on it. Hopefully, we're in the tournament for long enough we can talk about it for a couple of episodes. It would, would be, be nice, man. That would yeah, be great. So, so changing gears, uh, one baseball cool thing I saw today. Shout out to the Morning Hangover. Uh, subscribe to that so you can get your your morning fix with all the tips and what's going on in country music, where you can see it and hear it and all this. Very cool. Thanks, Kurt, for putting this up because I wouldn't have seen it because I don't follow the Texas Rangers. But uh, very, but one of my favorite ball players ever, Juan Gonzalez, did play for the Rangers. But anyway, Texas Rangers have renamed their field Charlie Pride Field uh, in honor of uh, the Dallas area legend. So I uh, want to say uh, good call on that, Texas Rangers. That uh, couldn't be more fitting. Uh, I'm glad they did that. That's very, very cool. That was a, made me smile on the inside when I saw that this morning. So good call, Texas yeah, it's Rangers. Their spring train, yeah, it's their spring training field. And, um, you know, he was a – uh, I don't know if it made it onto an episode, but we talked about the fact that he was a baseball player. Oh yeah, you know, oh, yeah. and a darn, just, darn a professional. I mean, yeah. so just couldn't make um, enough money after he got married and stuff. Had to go to work. It must be it must be nice to be good enough at baseball to be a pro. Yeah, good enough at singing to be a pro. <laughs> to be a legend, and not only a pro, a freak, a legend. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's right. just incredible, man. Yeah. It's like what can he not do? Yeah, it, no, some of these guys blow my mind. I've never – that's one of the – he's one of the and ones. And women, I mean. Yeah. He's one of the ones that of um, uh, all of them – I never heard anyone say a bad thing about Charlie Pride. Never. Not one time. No. Not anybody in a, a radio. I remember. Nothing, a, another artist. Nothing. No one's ever had anything bad to say about him. You and I have discussed this off the air, I know, but um, he was my grandpa's favorite. Yeah. Pedro's uh, too. My grandpa that I always talked about being so close to – he happened to be both of our grandfather's favorite, mm. and he and I, Jr. and I, both uh, our grandpas were our heroes. So obviously, if that's your hero's favorite artist, yeah. he's pretty pretty high at the top of, of our right. list as well. Yeah, he uh, he's from not far from where Pedro grew up. My granddad in Mississippi in the Delta Sledge. Picking sledge he's from sledge mississippi and and uh pedro was from webb mississippi which isn't far both in the delta i'm sure they all sent all their cotton to to greenville to ship it off but they were both sharecroppers uh you know and pedro went off they both i guess yeah no charlie went to the army too i guess that's how both of them got out of the cotton patch was going to the army because that's what granddaddy used to always say uh because he lied about his age and got in a little early or something and i said why'd you do that he said anything beat picking cotton that cotton patch so, yeah. um, so that's that's very cool. I'm very proud of my granddad. I've seen all he accomplished in his life with a second grade education. But uh, Charlie too to go from picking cotton in Mississippi as a sharecropper to uh, country music hall of fame. Well, yeah, well, baseball, you know, traveling baseball professional baseball player to uh, country music hall of fame to the Rangers mm -hmm. naming the MLB uh, spring training field after you. You know, I mean, pretty cool yeah. for old, old guy to work hard. And, Follow your dreams, too. Dream big. He could have settled at any point. He never settled. Right. Pretty incredible. So, yeah, so congrats cool. to, to his family and his legacy. And uh, as you said, kudos to the, the Rangers for, for doing that. Um, yeah. Well, that's baseball, <laughs> basketball. I thought maybe we'd bounce on a little football since it's free agency whirlwind uh, this past week. And uh, also a couple of announcements. Uh, I got to get this one on out of the way. I uh, want to say um, – Enjoy your retirement, Mr. Drew Brees. Thank you for all you did for the city of New Orleans and the Saints. Uh, the epitome of class and never seen anybody sling one like that. 
and mm-hmm. uh, and, and be a, and never heard of another thing. Teammates loved him. Just a great guy. Great for the city. Great for the sport. Broke all kinds of records. Got told several times it wasn't going to happen. Undersized injury early on. Back up to Super Bowl quarterback. Uh, thank you for all you did for us, Drew. And enjoy your retirement. You earned it, buddy. Um, and yeah, then and I, he, he ended his career as all time leading passer. I, yeah. you know, I'm sure Brady's going to break that cause he's going to play till he's 70, I guess. <laughs> right. But, uh, yeah. but, uh, but yeah, what an accomplishment and under, you know, me, I'm always pulling for the, the underdogs and he was undersized. I mean, somewhere around six foot. Um, and we Barely were watching 200 pounds. Yeah. We were watching, I think, um, uh, I don't know, some sports show on ESPN recently and Booger McFarlane. Uh, LS, former LSU great, and um, and I forget who he played for in the league, but he play, he had a pretty good career, if I'm not mistaken, Colts. in the league. Also, I don't remember. I, I want to the- say he played with Drew, but I could be I could be wrong. Um, but anyway, um, he he brought up a point that I was unaware of that Drew statistically is the most accurate quarterback in the history of the league which is a pretty incredible statement he played for tampa so, bay so uh, congrats to him booger played for tampa okay, bay okay tampa bay well the then the other thing is uh and you kind of alluded to it but you know our our wives being down there from down there and 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 you living down there for a while uh we understand what Drew Brees and his family not only meant to the Saints organization, but what he meant to the city of New Orleans at a time where nobody wanted to go to New Orleans. Yep. He had the opportunity to pretty much pick and choose where he went. He went there and won an am- a great ambassador for the city um, of New Orleans, which is such a uh, an important American city, uh, yep. you know, in my opinion. And and uh, he just he did a, a really incredible job of of being. Pretty much the face of a, a city, yeah. not only through, a, a, an NFL team. Yeah, through, uh, you know, not the greatest years in the city and then through Katrina, which had to be the, the low point in the last couple of yeah, hundred years no there. And uh, to stand tall and stay there and, 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 and be consistently in the game. We were – Saints, since he's been there, we've, we've been in the hunt every year, you know. Yeah, um, and you, you brought up the point, you know, they they did win one. They beat the Colts when Peyton Manning was there. I forget what year that was, but probably some 10 or something 10, like that. It was 10, yeah. Um, but, um, you know, they, they really could have won two or three. And, you know, I, I hate to blame officiating, and I'm not even a Saints fan, but it, with if it weren't for a couple of just atrocious calls or non-calls, uh in the playoffs to to send them to it was either in the uh to send them to the league championship game or to send them to the super bowl i mean they probably get there and win another one or two yep two two times got hosed on that yeah two calls so two. but uh they'll be in good hands um yeah you know looks they, like they we're take, signing taste some hill just signed a crazy big contract i think it's a little misleading yeah um it's like four years 140 million and he's a bit of a swiss army knife if you will for them uh but i think if there's a certain amount guaranteed but we were watching the other day it looks like they're going with uh they're going to try to ride Jameis winston and which has hey he's had some great moments if he can just cut down on turnovers yeah you know he was I obviously mean, great in college and mm-hmm. threw a ton of threw, threw for a ton of yards at tampa bay he just also threw threw it to the other team a lot. So, right. if he can knock that off. And, and with a guy like Sean Payton, maybe he can. He's the QB whisperer. That was kind of the plan. So, yeah. And I know uh, – I was just looking through here. looks like Dak Prescott staying in Dallas. I know your cousin Holly will love that. Uh, looks like a lot of people stayed where they were staying. We lost hey. a really – Go ahead. As a Steelers fan, I'm sorry. Uh, we lost a, a – a really good – I think he's an edge rusher uh, out of Kentucky, Bud Dupree, really kind of a mainstay on our uh, defensive line. So, that's going to hurt um, uh, as a Steelers fan. And then they're saying we're going to lose what's arguably our best receiver over the last few years since Antonio Brown left and went through whatever he went through um, is uh, Juju Smith-Schuster. So, 
we're going to have to rebuild with the draft and I'm, I'm a little nervous about it. So yeah, for a couple of years, right? Yeah. We're out of money, man. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, that's just how it goes when that, when you, the way they struck, like you were saying about, uh, taste some stuff, the way they structure these things to do, do, do this and that, to, I know Brady signed for an extension for four or five years, but it only guarantees he'll play one But the, because the money gets spread out so they don't go over the cap. I mean, it's just there's a whole algorithm to how they do that now that I definitely don't understand. But uh, yeah. one, um, the old wizard up there in Boston's doing it again. He's got – the Dude, two, they've made more moves over the last day or so than anybody. Unbelievable. Than I've ever remember seeing in a single couple of days period ever. I mean, they signed the best two free agent tight ends, Tennessee's tight end, Smith, who's a stud, and then our buddy Hunter Henry leaving L.A. Chargers coming to the Northeast. Yeah. And, I mean, I remember peop- I remember when Hunter first got in the league, I would always pick him on my fantasy team because nobody knew what keeping up with him at Arkansas when I was living in Louisiana. And he always crushed for me until he got hurt. And then he came back and crushed again. So, they're reloading. They got they signed three or four stud linemen, uh, some defense corner – or uh, outside linebackers. I mean, they're just, they're just loading up. Yeah, and, and I'm not a Patriots fan, um, but as an Arkansas guy – They've probably signed more Arkansas guys over the last 10, 15 years than anybody. Not yeah. probably, they have. And, yeah. uh, I'll give you a little bit of a backstory on it. Obviously, Coach Bielema uh, has a good relationship with, uh, with Coach uh, Belichick. You know, Coach Bielema was on the staff there for the last two or three years, uh, with the exception of last year. Um, and, of course, now he's, he's back in the college game. But – um, you know, those relationships go a long way. And, um, and Coach Belichick has also become really good friends with – he's really well known in Arkansas, and, and there, he's had some national press. It's a high school coach here at Pulaski Academy in Little Rock, a private school that has won some stupid number of um, – State championship. State championship. I'm talking 10, 12, 13, some crazy something. Wow. Um, and, and just produce great D1 players for us each and every year here at Arkansas. And um, Coach Belichick has called him the best high school coach in America. And it, so there may be a person out there who's read this article, or there may not be. I don't know. But you can look it up. His name's, again, Kevin Kelly. And I don't know him. I've not met him. Um, but um, – there was an article done about him in the national press maybe five, six years ago. He doesn't punt ever. He always goes for it on fourth down, and every single time he onside kicks because he's gone through the analytics and he claims that it, it gives you the best opportunity to win. Wow. And so it's, it's pretty interesting. You can look that up yeah. and maybe find it online or something. But anyway, they're really good friends. Hunter played for Kevin Kelly at Pulaski Academy. And so I'm sure ah. a lot of those relationships matter, you know, in the decision-making process. You know, I know Kevin oh, Kelly, to. the coach here, goes up to New England every year for their um, their off season, And, you know, I, so anyway, it, it's kind of a, a little bit of backstory there that you really wouldn't know unless, you know, you're from here or, or – you know, happen to have stumbled upon an article here right. or there. Or you listen so. to the Justin Moore podcast. Or you listen to the Justin Moore podcast. We just try to so. break break news that you never even heard of or thought yeah. of. And we've got some so. we've got some of that coming up next week too. Some some breaking news we're gonna drop. Uh, so we'll get to that. But big, I didn't know, big news. Big news. It's not big, just big little time. news, it's big news. Yeah. yeah. It's like it's like when you do hashtag Justin Moore Podcast, but you do it in all caps. That's what this is gonna be. It's gonna be a huge Justin Moore podcast. So uh, get on that next week. But uh, until then, remember to click like and subscribe on anywhere you find podcasts on youtube make sure to sign up for that notification hit the like download button where you can get the, all the justin moore podcasts as soon as it comes out and use the hashtag justin moore podcast anytime you've got questions or comments for the show i've been checking them and i've actually got a nice little stack of them right here just some q a we can get on today if you want to you want to uh yeah let's, let's take a little, quick little break and then come for the sponsor and then come back and uh jump on those yeah let's do it man all right sounds good we'll be right back here shortly on the justin moore podcast 
Hey everybody, we want to remind you that this podcast is brought to you by Bobcat, the ones that help you do more. This time of year, I start to get pretty excited myself about getting out onto my property and getting after all the cleanup and prep for spring. I run about, I don't know, 130 acres between what I own and and what I lease, and there's always something to get done, I promise you. Uh, whether it's planting trees, clearing brush, hauling rock, there's always something. Bobcat, man, they've got the equipment to tackle it all. That stuff is tough. It's agile, uh, getting into tight spots and corners. Uh, and it's also incredibly versatile because not only do they have compact loaders, excavators, tractors, etc., they also have every dadgum Uh, attachment or implement you could even think of to put on your loader your excavator or your tractor you get yourself a piece of bobcat equipment and you'll never ever run out of jobs you can do because they also build more than 80 attachments to handle any job you can think of y'all check their website out to see the huge variety of machines and attachments trust me you're going to be impressed i promise you check them out at bobcat.com all right, welcome everyone back here to season three, episode six of the Justin Moore podcast. Uh, I'm Jr. the Handler, and Justin's on the other end of the Zoom machine today. And we just got got back from a little break uh, to give a shout out to our wonderful sponsor, Bobcat. And uh, we had some. Speaking of that, I had a, I had a. We we're going to do some Q and A. I had one from old buddy Casey Taylor T Town uh, at Casey Taylor eight oh nine. He says, uh, J M and Bobcat Company. Even Jr. the Handler can drive a Bobcat. So I don't know if Casey's saying I'm incapable of driving other things or just that these are that uh, <laughs> user friendly, but uh, Casey seems to think that uh, it's a good good partnership there that because I can even drive a Bobcat, which I'm going to be doing soon because they're going to bring us one to have out on the road. We're going to have some fun with that thing. Yep. Well, we uh, he may, Casey may be referring to uh, he or she. I don't know if it's a he or she. He, but, it's uh, one of my buddies. Yeah. Okay, probably referring to the story that you told uh, on a previous podcast about catching our pasture on pasture fire. Pasture on fire, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if I, this... not, go back and listen, find that one. You can find it if you just look up the Justin Moore podcast, however you get your podcast. That was a pretty pretty good episode if you go back and listen to it. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, Bobcat, yes. Uh, Paul's 84, International Harvester. Uh, may catch your field on fire. <laughs> so uh, thanks for sending that in, Casey. Uh, here comes Christy Devely at Hockey Sully on Twitter. She says, I love the new intro and out- outro for season three of the Justin Moore podcast. We do too. Shout out hey, to That's Cody. All, all Cody via Lobos. Thanks, yep. buddy. Absolutely. And thank you for liking it. We appreciate it. Yep. Thanks, Christy. Uh, Ethan Hoskins sends in, JR the Handler, any advice on playing darts? Hashtag Justin Moore podcast. I don't know if that's because I said I have a dart board up in my studio now, but uh, – I do not have any tips on playing darts. I've tried to play over the years here and there. Uh, here's a shocker for you. We'll throw a shocker in here. We'll get to this one today. Here's a shocker. Of all the years I've been in honky tonks and I've been, you know, at parties and all this stuff, I am terrible at party games and, like, stuff like that. I don't know how to shoot pool well. I can't throw darts. I'm not good at poker, uh, cornhole. I'm not really good at any of that. I'm not. You'd think as much as I've been in bars, I would have learned how to shoot pool or I work jukebox pretty good, and I can. I'm not I, either. I can order a beer I'm pretty pretty quick with the best of them, but I just. I, hey, and we ain't we ain't near as good as we used to be at drinking either. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> we found that out this past week. <laughs> and the hangovers hurt more than they used, used to. to. No I mean. doubt, no <laughs> doubt. So we gotta get so our sea legs back back uh, under us. Our cape, uh, our capes have fallen off uh, as far as that's concerned, too. <laughs> yeah. So no, sorry, Ethan. I don't have any advice on playing darts. If anybody out there is a is a good uh, dart slinger, uh, send us in some tips for uh, Ethan, and I'm gonna look at them too because I would like to brush up and be decent at the game I own at my house. I got a punching so bag over here too, and you think you imagine how many times you see me punching it. <laughs> so you're not, yeah. So you're not good at at uh, at quarters or. Even anything like that. Uh, a drinking game only. Any drinking game? or Oh, you are, okay. Yeah, well, the drinking part of it. But, like, the game last, part, no. Last time I, I played quarters, I, I drank too fast and swallowed the quarter out of the bottom <laughs> of the cup. So, I'm not even good at that. Yeah. So, so yeah. So, no, we'll, but maybe we'll get some some uh, some uh, some tips on that from somebody. Here's a sports one from D Gilroy 007 on Twitter. Uh, JM, what are your thoughts on y'all's recruiting class this year? 
I know we uh, we had a bunch of recruiting for uh, uh, football, which kind of been overshadowed. I, I don't keep up with it near as much as you do, but I have seen we're we're picking up some studs here and there. <clears throat> uh, is, is he referring to football? I'm assuming college football is what I'm assuming. This was, okay. would have been uh, um, this, this question I've had for a few weeks. Yeah, if we're talking about football, um, Coach Pittman's doing a a really good job uh, in reference to. Um, you know how Arkansas is typically fared in that department. You know, the the tough thing with us is we're such a small state, and and we have, you know, we're not heavily populated. So you know, we might get six, eight, ten D one athletes in football every year, yeah. which you know by comparison is is way low. If you talking about you know Louisiana or Alabama or Georgia or I mean you can name it Texas, Florida, uh, Florida, California. I mean it's just yeah. we're we're pretty low on that totem pole. Pennsylvania. And so it really it really forces us to go out and and I may be giving you more than you bargained for here, but it really forces us to go out and develop relationships from a coaching staff uh, with some of those states that I just mentioned. And and so that being said, we usually finish, you know, somewhere around 25 in the nation. Um, you know, we've, we've been as high over the last seven, eight, ten years as 15 or 12 or something like that. But – Let's say you finish 15th in the nation, you're still finishing probably 8th in the SEC and maybe 6th in the West, 5th in the West. And so it's just really hard to make up ground. But that being said, Coach Pittman is doing a really, really good job. He, his inroads at Georgia have really paid off. Um, and one of the reasons everybody's so excited about Coach Pittman, uh, outside of the, the hope that we saw last year, the way they played on the field – uh, compared to the the previous two three years, is he's a recruiting machine. I mean, he's a really good technical offensive line coach, but he's a recruiting one of the best recruiters in the nation. So, I, 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 if I'm not mistaken, I, I've I've been such in a basketball slash baseball world. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think we're somewhere. Or, in just inside or just outside of the top 10 at the moment, which there's a lot of ball game left to be played in recruiting. And, you know, Alabama's going to get whoever they want and uh, Georgia's going to get whoever they want and, and Texas and some of those teams. But if we could finish somewhere inside the top 15 perennially, I think it would be really, really good for us. But, you know, I mentioned we had six, eight, ten kids a year that can play D1 football – in particular, SEC football, um, we probably have twice that many in basketball. So that's hurt us in football also. A lot of these kids that um, would have played football in the past are, are swapping to basketball, you know, and that's for a myriad of reasons. Um, but, uh, you know, that's why we were able to have a top five recruiting class in basketball this past year, and they're all helping us out with the exception of one who got hurt, and he'll be great next year. And so, you know, um, we have to compete with the Blue Buds for, for those guys. But if we can keep getting, you know, a few of those guys each year, I think Coach Musselman in basketball can keep it rolling uh, for a while because our basketball is really, really good in Arkansas, uh, probably a little better than football. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, there you go. That's the recruiting breakdown from Coach Moore. There, like, I know. I'm I'm so ridiculous. I don't. <laughs> I love it. I and love I it. haven't I, even and I haven't even been keeping up with, uh, with with football like I should. But and then in baseball, I'll just give you that since I gave you back baseball. We're always top five or whatever in recruiting, yeah. just because we've built. We're kind of like. Outside of the championships, I mean, we have been one of those Alabamas or Georgias in baseball for a long time. We just haven't put that ring on the finger yet, uh, but that's all we're missing. I mean, we, we've been to so many College World Series in the last 20 years. and st I mean, it probably yeah. second to very few people. So, our recruiting in baseball and basketball is awesome, and Coach Pittman is – and doing a damn good job at, at, 
bringing up the recruiting rankings in football as well. Yep, there you go, recruiting by more. Um, I had here's another one. Changed gears here a little bit. Ha ha ha. No pun intended. This is from Sam Bell on Instagram. He goes, Jr. I'm a huge Justin Moore fan. Have been since day one, and the podcast is badass. I feel like I've known you all forever. LOL. I actually went to my first JM concert about eight years ago in Louisville, Kentucky, at Fourth Street Live. Made it to front row. Held up a Chevy emblem during bed of my Chevy, and JM pointed at me and my group of buddies. My dad and I are restoring my 1969 C10 four by four. I would love to see it in a JM music video i will bring it to you if you're interested when it's done shouldn't be too much longer thanks for reading this buddy any feedback would be ba heck yeah man that's awesome first and foremost thank you for the compliment and thank you for being a fan and i you know it's so funny we've been doing the music thing for so long it's so shocking i guess at times to hear how much people have enjoyed this podcast because this was just kind of us just bsing and uh, I think we've we you and I have kind of figured it out a little bit. It took us a while to find our footing, but we've gotten much better at it, and maybe hopefully a little more professional. Yeah. Um, I don't know, but maybe you guys like when we act like idiots, and I pass out under my desk and fall asleep with a dip in my mouth. I don't know. That was all um, my all my buddies I saw this weekend. That was their favorite. That and Rhett, That was their favorite. <laughs> so, uh, but so I'm glad you're enjoying this and. Um, we genuinely have tried to make this as good as we possibly can. And, and, uh, I know I've certainly enjoyed myself doing it and something that we're, we're, we're looking forward to, uh, having the chance to continue to do for a long time. As a matter of fact, we may have some, some other news pertaining to the podcast, uh, that JR and I have discussed off the air that it's just going to hopefully take it to another level, um, as far as exposure, et cetera, it goes. So we'll keep you guys informed on that as well, but thank you for listening and watching. And, um, and yeah, absolutely. We're all for having some, some cool old trucks and yeah. restored trucks and videos, man. Absolutely. I think that's cool. And we can involve the, I feel bad calling you guys fans. I mean, friends uh, yeah, we, of our we gotta career. Figure out a, we got to figure out a, a podcast thing too. What we, what our, uh, what our, our podcast land? But it's like, uh, it's like friends. Yeah, right. Or something not, <laughs> right. not fans, and we don't know each other well enough to necessarily be friends. But it's like fran- friends or something. Yeah. We're Maybe zoomies. We coin that term. Yeah, We're zoomies. We can talk to you on the Zoom machine. It's all good. Yeah. Uh, but and I've actually kept in touch with Sam since then. I, I chimed back and told him to send me some updates as it comes along because I just wanted to see it in general. And he sent me some, and it's he's got it rocking. He they got it fired up last week, and it's it is badass. Hey, it, Sam, you said yeah. It, hey, Sam, if you're interested in those kinds of things, we talked to uh, Granger Smith. I don't know if it was the first or second season um, of this this podcast but uh at the beginning of the pandemic he and two of his bus drivers started restoring his old truck that if you're a fan of granger um and i would be shocked if you weren't if you're a fan of ours that he used his earl dibbles truck and has been in a ton of videos it was uh, his dad's truck um new uh, and then he passed it on to to granger who's the oldest of three boys in, in his family, and he wrecked it and destroyed it. And they've been restoring it. I've been keeping up with it, and we talked to Granger about that on, on the Justin Moore podcast. Again, it was a couple of seasons back maybe, but you can go find it pretty easily. But he has a YouTube uh, series uh, about it. It's called Restoring Earl Dibbles Jr.'s Truck, and there's 20-ish episodes. They're not completely finished, but it, it may interest you if, if you're um, – if you're into that that kind of deal, restoring trucks, because you guys may have some stuff in common, you may learn some stuff. You may be able to help him out because he takes suggestions on on the comments page. So check that out. Yeah, you know, I just had a thought too on that, and I am going to tap him whenever next time we do a video that we need uh, vehicles in. Um, but I thought, you know, it'd be cool because we talked this weekend. I hate we never got to get get my granddad and Paul together. Uh, before my granddad uh, passed. But uh, I was just thinking, you know, he's got that 75 Trans Am in Jackson that I've been marking. I've been threatening to get oh. rocking again. We should get it dialed in before we do a video again, and we could use it in there, honor Pedro a little bit, the whole thing. That, that would, would be cool, cool man. Yeah. Cause it's, Absolutely. It's, I mean, it's Charlie's got the 57, too, but I don't, I, I'm not going to move it. We out rode of the in it. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's right. That's right. At Grand's at time. We played in Jackson. So, yeah, well, thanks, Sam. Yep. Yeah, keep sending me that stuff. We'll, I'll send these to Justin when you send them to me, and he can check it out, too. i got a long one here. I hope I can read all this. <clears throat> this is from another one on Instagram, Captain Knight underscore seven. First off, Justin and JR, I really enjoy the podcast a lot. I have finished both seasons and can't wait for more. I really like how it pulls the curtain back on offstage stuff I would have no clue about. I definitely learn a lot by listening. I have always been a fan of Justin's, but now I am a much bigger fan. JR, thanks for reading. Let's all make the day count. I have recently bought the book and have been reading it daily. It really helps me in my life. I just saw Justin play at the Star Plaza Theater, which is now closed. I remember Justin saying, I heard they were closing this place. I hope they build something else for you guys. They haven't. It was the first time I had seen Justin play live, and he put on one hell of a show. I really want to thank those guys for – thank you guys for putting the podcast out for someone to listen to. It's great, and I hope there are many more to come. I have two questions, one for Justin and one for JR. JM, what – or do you have in would or do you have any interest in owning a bar like many of your fellow country music coworkers do? Also, will you ever put out a cover CD of Frankie Valley? <laughs> um, yeah, you know it's funny. I think was it you and I, Jr. Or somebody over this last week we we discussed uh, the bar idea, and it's actually something that kind of like this podcast I, i've had in the back of my mind for a long time to to do um it would more than likely be um somewhere in the little rock area um and i could go way down into the specifics of why but yeah it's a goal of mine i think in the future um if, if i can develop the right relationships um you know with other folks who want to be a part of it because you know certainly we're looking forward to being too busy for me to be able to run a bar yeah, but I, was uh, I, would, say, I would love to own a bar bar i was gonna say i don't think i could yeah, gm that a bar too. a bar slash venue because sorry i've got a lag because as crazy as it is um no as crazy as it is there are uh very few places uh, around home that i would consider like country bars and places for newer acts to play so you got to think about it you leave nashville on the bus and you got one hit song um and you got to get all the way to texas or oklahoma before you can play a show really and uh or north louisiana maybe and so it would be a really perfect uh midway stop to get you to your friday saturday shows on a thursday or something so there there have been conversations about that um you know obviously throughout the the last year or so that, that's not been a, a priority but yeah i would love to do it down the road I, I think it would be a lot of fun i think it would it would also provide some great opportunities for some some newer artists and then honestly myself to be able to go and show up once a month or or whatever um yeah but uh yeah we'll We'll certainly uh, look to, you know, have conversations in the future about that. Yeah, I'll stay on him about that, everybody. We're going to make that happen. We just got to, like Justin said, I can't I can't TM him and GM the bar, too, and he can't be there every night slinging drinks and singing. No. So uh, we got to get somebody to help us run the ops part of it. We know some really great club owners and promoters across the country yeah. that – that uh, I think once we do do it, it'll be like the podcast. It'll go all in and we'll put our full effort towards it, and it'll be rock. Here's what I think would be cool is if each week I w we we get to that point, and each week we're uh, I'm I'm doing the podcast from there. Kind of like if you remember the Opry Mills Mall where they had WSM, yeah. And people could walk by the booth and see in to where um, the WSM people were were you know uh, Filming, broadcasting, yeah. and I think that would be kind of cool. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a good idea. Yeah, for sure. Something like that. Uh, let's see here. we got a couple more. Um, let's see. Let me do this one first. This is a kind of a, a unique one. But uh, Tyler Castle, 21, on Twitter, hashtag Justin Moore Podcast. My guilty pleasure is I will throw on a sad country song while I'm at the gym all the time. Uh, face with tears. Oh, it's kind of good. Face with tears of joy. As a single guy, it makes me think about past relationships and gets me a little pissed during my workout. To cut to the chase, I've lost 50 pounds during COVID. 
It's a unique take on working out. Most people listen to, you know, something upbeat and this and that. This guy listens to sad old country songs because it makes him think about past relationships. Um, and it gets him pissed <laughs> off enough to work out harder. And he's lost 50 pounds in turn doing this method. Well, I will say this. Congratulations, man. That's awesome. That's a great accomplishment. Um, and, I, you know, I, I, I'm not a workout guy. To be honest with you, um, I, I I try to stay as healthy as I possibly can by eating well. Now, over the last year, I have not done so like I have in the last seven or eight. Um, but I understand the determination and the drive that it takes and the and the willpower it takes to, to do something like lose 50 pounds. So I would suggest however you can motivate yourself, do it, man. Absolutely. Whatever it, whatever it takes. Um, so congratulations and and um, if there's more you want to lose man stay on the path if it's working it's working absolutely and hey there's worse music to be listening to than sad old country songs i can tell you that keep rocking tyler congrats on that good job buddy uh next one got here is from jay stevens 8822 on twitter hey justin big fan have been since i saw your chevrolet court Saw you at Chevrolet Court at the New York State Fair. Loved how you acapella outlaws like me. Anyhow, my question is, if you owned a record company, what five artists, past or present, no matter, would you sign first? <laughs> um, Boy, that's a good question. Um, All right. You know, I would probably... First and foremost, I don't want to own a record label. Um, <laughs> I'd rather keep making records for somebody. But if I were to... Um, in order for me to be as passionate about it as, as I, I would like to be, um, and feel as though you have to be to make it successful, uh, it would have to be people that I, I genuinely believed in, uh, I genuinely loved the music. So I would probably start with a couple of legend acts, uh, personally. Um, you know, if I had to pick a couple, golly, um, right now, probably Dwight Yoakam. Because I still think he makes great music. He's my favorite artist and believe that he has a following out there. And he does a lot of things um, outside of uh, music. I know he's got a, a radio show and some different things, which I think is important these days in order to keep the business going of music. It, it's not, you know, solely radio or, or records or or. Uh, shows it's kind of all of the above in order to be financially and monetarily successful um you know and then i would have to go to uh, one of adam hambrick's mount rushmore uh, artist dolly parton who's doing more than dolly parton ever always At, i mean and she's just a, a pros a pros pro um and she, she, I mean, she just does so many things. Uh, obviously, incredible at music, and that's that's how we knew her to begin with. But I mean, she does her own podcast that does really, really well. She, I'm sure, can still make great music if she wants to. Um, plus, I would just love to work with with her. I mean, an know, icon and learn from her. Yeah, you know? yeah, no doubt. And then. Um, Let's see. You got to have a new artist, at least one, uh, right now. And it's not because I'm being biased, but uh, I probably go with uh, I probably go with uh, Heath Sanders. I really believe in what he's doing. I think he's incredibly talented. I think he's incredibly articulate and bright and smart and has a great worth work ethic. Um, and believe that he has a really bright future ahead and voice in country music. Um, and then, good Lord, just to make some money. I mean, who, I'm not, if I get a couple more, I mean, why not pick the biggest acts out there? <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know, the you could go, you could pick any number of them. Luke Bryan, um, yeah. Thomas Rhett, yeah. uh, Luke Combs, um, 
it really, there you couldn't go wrong with Miranda Lambert, Carrie yeah. Underwood, Dark Spence. You could couldn't go yeah. wrong with any of them. And, and then I have to sign myself. I mean, I right. got to sign myself. But uh, and and George Strait, while we're signing people. I mean, yeah, we, I mean, if we're going, we, you know, if I get a wish list. But uh, yeah. anyway, I, that would be kind of the direction that I would take. I'd kind of have right. d- different divisions: legend division, and then yeah, new like artist, it. and then I don't know. That's just, just my uh, my take. Just, um, just for me, I'll throw mine out there real quick. Just while I was thinking about it in my head, just that's a good be, question, though. Yeah, that's really a really great good question. question. Yeah. Um, and I take a similar, but uh, I would have to say, of course, I got to have JM on the roster because I got to have somebody to go on the road with. I'd have to put John on their party because I just I love his music. Yeah. Right. And then Riley Green's got to be on my list. Hometown guy, killing it. Love his music. Uh, Miranda, my probably my favorite female artist, rocking, and she's had just a phenomenal career, and she still puts out just country music. So I got her, the Queen Miranda for sure. Uh, and then, I mean, not because we've toured with him or because he's been on the podcast. And I mean, there's uh, you could put a million people, guys or girls, on this list, but I mean, Tracy Lawrence wouldn't be a bad pick either because he's still rocking. And he's pro buddy, and we know he knows how to strut oh. and work it, buddy. Oh, we we can learn from him too. <laughs> we yeah, started he, learning from him, then we had to quit. I know he's got so much swag. He just drips with country swag, man. He's oh, so cool, good. so cool. So, we need then, to get him back on. It's been a while. Yeah, yeah. It was, he was all locked up having the the Farm Olympics last time we talked to him, and then. <laughs> Another one that's got a new album coming out, which some of my buddies uh, have got some cuts on, um, who has just never put out anything bad, Travis Tritt. Yeah. I mean, if you're just talking about somebody. And then these guys are still working, you know, and stuff. But anyway, there, there's uh, there's the record label of, of JM on one. So um, thanks for sending that question in, uh, Jay Stevens. Uh, the, i got a few here that kind of go on our Mount Rushmore list. Um, and this is one just a suggestion for a future Mount Rushmore, would be finding the Mount Rushmore of country art. This is from uh, Chase Mahan, uh, Mahan NFLD on Twitter. He says, finding the Mount Rushmore of country artists and southern rock bands is hard. I reckon the Mount Rushmore of country albums would be a doozy. Oh, gosh. So, yeah. So we don't even going to go down that road today. We ain't got – Yeah, but that, we need to write that down and I have am. that for next time. Yeah, for certain. For certain. I think That's, southern rock might be the easier – of the the way to go i think you could probably uh and did we do that one i don't even know if we, we did, did southern rock one, bands but. yeah but we didn't oh, okay because me and you we did the almond you i'm an almond brothers skinner thing skinner so. almond brothers marshall yeah. tucker bands zz top i would kind of consider yeah, southern rock Ch- charlie daniels charlie daniels so anyway wet willie yeah right, so here we go <laughs> here we yeah go. we we would we would have to uh dive deep into that one and and obviously we would all have different ones just like we do artists but yeah. um but yeah that that's a good one though we need yeah. to do that country albums i mean somebody asked me the other day he just listened to your live album he said i'm just getting into these country live albums is there any one that stands out that you got to go back to and i was like for me a live junior well that was a great one too but Waylon live it's a double album it's Waylon live yeah. and it has got all i mean in the band play the way they recorded the crowd the crowd mics are hot my favorite parts uh um when the guy right before <laughs> right before T the, for uh, texas T yeah. for tennessee right like before the and uh, in the intro of the song you hear the crowd behind them as they're getting ready to go into um um loving her was the easiest thing you hear a guy in the crowd go go get him Waylon and I mean, that, <laughs> I, I start. That just gets. I get the hair standing up my arm thinking about it. So, uh, so yeah. If but you the, guys can see this out there, that's the Hank Live to go get. That's uh, that's a that's one of my favorites. Yeah, and that's the Charlie rock. Daniels had a great one too. Yeah, that's a rocking so, one. So, yeah. um, let's see. These are all three here. I'll do these three together. These are all pertaining to the NASCAR edition we had with our brother, Mr. Austin Dillon, a few weeks back uh, about the Mount Rushmore of NASCAR. Uh, T.J. Norman says his NASCAR Mount Rushmore is Dale Earnhardt, Richard Petty, Daryl Waltrip, and Jeff Gordon, and the shout-out to my home, Kansas City. Shout-out KC on the podcast. My favorite concert was J.M., Eric Church, Gary Allen at the Starlight in Kansas City. Um, so yeah, Dale Earnhardt, wow. Richard Petty, Dale Walker, Jeff Gordon. That's a pretty strong Mount Rushmore. DW. Yep. Next one, um, which is, oh, here we go. Uh, Dustin Burke, uh, on Twitter says Mount Rushmore of NASCAR, Dale Earnhardt, Richard Petty, Jimmy Johnson, Dave, Peer- David Pearson. Pearson's one of those legends that we didn't really grow up watching, but yeah, a pioneer. 
Um, Brett Griggs, uh, Brett Griggs 20 on Twitter says hashtag Justin Moore Podcast, Mount Rushmore of NASCAR, Earnhardt, Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson, Bobby Allison, and Richard Petty. He's just going to put another one on his, but um, <laughs> that's a good one. Bobby Allison got to have hard. I'm telling you, it's a, it doesn't matter what you do. It's hard to get to four, man. I mean, it's just, I the, mean, it just, it's always hard to get to four. I mean, it, if you could go like name the four best from Alabama of all time artists or the yeah. four best uh, from Arkansas of all time, it's, it's just hard, it's man. Just it's hard, hard to get there. It's like a it's top just, ten. It's hard to, if you do a top ten, somebody will get snubbed and do it still. I ain't big enough. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that's why going back to sports, I think that's why we all love the NCAA tournament because there's so many teams get a chance. You yeah. know what I mean? A, a big field like that. Because like we're doing it with football now. We want to keep adding two more playoff teams, two more play. Eventually, it's just going to be like the NCAA tournament. But. Hey, speaking of Mount Rushmore, JR, yeah. um, and this guy's got to be on it for songwriters, um, a guy who you and I have become friends with, which is just one of the coolest things ever, is Dean Dillon. Oh, man. Uh, so maybe we should do a song a songwriter. Ooh, that's a good uh, one. Mount Rushmore at some point, too. Um, and so speaking of Dean, we, while Dino. we were gone this week on, on the bus, we, we watched a, a documentary on, on Dean and his journey as a songwriter and his career, which featured, uh, the King George Strait, who you and I just have man crushes on like crazy. Yeah. I yep. mean, he just looks smooth. He's smooth acting, looking just, just. Just like the perfect – if you could build a country music singer in a laboratory, that's what you'd build. It's I mean, it's just like – And, he, that, and, he, and he during the documentary – He looks perfect. He sounds perfect. Picks the greatest songs. I mean, it's just awesome. And, you know, for me, he dresses immaculately. His outfits are all point. His shirts are just killer. No one could else could pull that off. It just makes it look perfect. His jeans are kind of loose, but they got the crease in the front. Boots. I mean, I don't even know where you – normal people can't even get those boots he wears. I mean, it's just hat perfect. I mean, he just – the watch. The, I mean, he just – it's straight, man, the king. I mean, what can he say? Perfect. Uh, perfect. So, but, yeah, hey, talk but about it had, that. But uh, it had – yeah. Go ahead. I was going to say it had George Strait. It was called Tennessee Whiskey is the name of the documentary we watched. Just so Okay. That on there. But yeah. You, I, and I believe it's on Netflix. Don't quote me on that. But if, if you love country music, if you love George Strait – uh let's see who else was featured in it Ken, kenny chesney uh uh toby, toby. keith um pam and i'm tillis. leaving people out pam tillis uh, uh but it was it was great Buddy it's like Cannon. maybe an hour and a half or something like yeah. that but it really takes a deep dive into you know uh dean Dillon's career obviously but really provides a lot of insight as to george Strait's career and it's yeah. really 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 good y'all y'all should go check that out if you're a fan of country music and i would assume that you are if you're listening uh to this podcast but yeah it, it really really good tennessee whiskey uh it, it dean Dillon um documentary rockumentary whatever yeah. you want to say it's really awesome yeah. it's rock, really really good yeah rock doc for sure or honky tonk doc whatever you want to call yeah. it anyway yeah great stories i mean are you kidding me uh and th yeah you get that on netflix and we'll use that as our uh our movie and tv pick of the week and also another one that you hadn't even seen yet that i just watched recently uh is a documentary they did on the songwriters of the floor of Bama uh, a couple years ago it's called stories in rhyme you can go stories in rhyme.com and watch that but it features dean on there a lot larry john wilson some of that stuff and some of these stories that dean tells on the documentary we watched he tells on there and some different ones and stuff so that's another cool one if you're going down the songwriter thing that would uh i would check that out too stories in rhyme we'll put the link in the show notes and um tennessee whiskey i mean dino it was so funny because some of the stuff some of those artists were saying about being on the road with dean they're like toby's like well we're somewhere in oklahoma and uh, Dean says, hey, come on, go across the street with me to the antique store. You know, and we're thinking that's exactly the first thing he wanted to do when he was he on the road when he us. was on the bus with me. Yeah, and I'm like, all right. I mean, it's like you work on Dean's time. Yeah. It's just, yeah. just like it's so – but it's it's so awesome. He tells – there's some great stories in it. Um, and an, completely off the subject, but you told about another music um, documentary, rock doc, whatever you want to call it. There was one – I don't know, a couple of years ago that JR made me watch. And I was like, eh. But I fell 
so much in love with it. I made my wife watch it. Um, has nothing to do with country music, but if you just love music and the history of music and, you know, how relationships were not only um, formed but have developed and why artists have had or not had success or whatever, uh, there's one called Supermanch. Yes. That I believe is on Netflix, JR. It, it was for a long time. Super it is. It yeah. is so freaking incredible. It, it's just entertaining whether you're really super into music or you're not. It's just, it, but it anyway, I, it, it made me think of that when we were talking about all these stories because there's yeah. some good ones. So we can kind of give you – I'll give you one teaser. And, JR, take over if you – because you know it better than I do. But the, the Janis Joplin – um Jimi Hendrix Hendrix story this is kind of how it this is very early on in the in yeah. the um uh the the documentary of uh, called Supermanch yeah Supermanch it's the story of Shep Gordon who ended up being one of the most famous managers of all time and was by by mistake really he wasn't trying to be a manager but he went on to still manages Alice Cooper to this day on a handshake deal kind of like you and Pete did years ago yep and uh, so, yes, yeah, Shep is going – he's from New York, crazy hair, Jewish guy. Uh, goes to – he – I can't remember the very beginning. But somehow he gets into, um, like, prison security somehow. He was going to be a – he's a security guard in a prison. Well, he gets a job in California. So he goes there, and he's a long-haired guy and this and that, and this is back in the 60s. So uh, he gets there the first day. The other guards pick at him about his hair. They let the inmates beat him up. So he worked one day there, left – Took his car going north to L.A. Just, I think he might have been tripping on acid or something crazy like that. He tells in the story yeah. something just outrageous, but uh, different time, different place. Be driving around. Don't don't trip on acid and drive anyone. That's driving tip for the week. Don't do narcotics. And drive. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a few on the way back from your beach house yesterday that I thought were on something. I was ready to run them out of the road. <laughs> they, I hope they were because if they were just driving like that, they need to turn in their license. But uh, but he sees a he sees a light. You know, he's got to stop at a hotel. He's hammered, tired, whatever. So he stops at this hotel, gets a room, goes upstairs, hears some commotion downstairs, thinks somebody's uh, uh, attacking this woman. So he goes down and tackles this guy he thinks is attacking this woman well turns out no it was Jimi hendrix and janice joplin making out and uh he thought he was attacking her, i so thought he, they were having sex yeah well i wouldn't go go that far but that is it yeah that basically yeah, they, they, yeah. They, they were getting it on or, or what if, whatever they were doing down there and he hey we didn't up. make this documentary that's no, what no. they said i mean yeah this is it and uh so they break up they're like no man we're cool you know so anyway he just ends up staying at this hotel where everybody's it ends up being this hotel where all the famous people see it's where they uh in LA, away. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's where it's where he Belushi and no, it wasn't that. Wasn't of... it, it wasn't no. that. It wasn't that one. This is a motel, but I think this is where Janice or Jimmy One end up passing, though. Eventually, um, but he was there, and uh, he ended up selling weed to everybody. He ended up being the weed guy somehow. So Hendrix is up in his room, and and he's like, uh, "Oh, so you're Jewish, man?" And he goes, "Yeah." He said, "You ought to be a manager." I mean, uh, and he's like, well, yeah, well, who am I going to manage? And he goes, uh, Alice Cooper, he's a friend of mine, needs a manager. So he literally brings Alice Cooper in there. They shake hands, and he's been Alice Cooper's manager ever since. But and Alice went, Cooper's not Alice Cooper at this point, obviously. No, 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 it's yeah, yeah. Like, but he went on to manage, I mean, some of the biggest stars, and he stretched Teddy out. Teddy Pendergrass. Yeah, uh, uh, Ann Murray, a, j just to see if I, he could do it and got her up that career, you know, just – crazy hey t hey briefly i, I got to get out of here because i got yeah, yeah. softball practice and i haven't seen uh, my kiddos in a week but um um <laughs> it, just briefly because i think it's another great story and i i genuinely think people would enjoy this the uh teddy pendergrass how he became his manager is another great story in there if you oh, remember i don't remember it exactly so Something I know about the having the, the, the two-night shows, the ladies-only the, shows. No, all the drugs. I'll come to your room, and I'll bring all the drugs. He oh, tells yeah. Ted, remember that? Yeah, and if you can hang, or if hey, I well, can he, hang with you, I'll be your manager. No, what he said, it? long story short, and I'm paraphrasing here, but so he wants to manage Teddy Pendergrass. And if you don't know that name, look it up, and you you will know the music, obviously. Um, but um, so I think Teddy was was saying, well, why would I have you as my manager? Whatever, something to that effect. And he goes, I tell you what, 
I'll show up. Uh, this is super mensch saying this. I'll show up at your room X time, and I'll bring all the drugs you you can want to do. Because what was happening was Teddy was was heavy into drugs or drinking or both or something at the time, and was probably getting screwed monetarily <laughs> yeah. um, by not having a manager that was taking care of him. And he said, look, tell you what, I'll bring all these drugs to your room and we'll do them for as long as you can and you'll pass out and I'll still be up with the money. And if if that's the case, then you got to let me manage you. And they did drugs for like three days straight. And finally, Teddy passes out and and he's still up when Teddy wakes back up. And he's like, I, I got your money here. Yep. And so he was his manager for – it's something like to that yeah. effect. Yeah, very cool documentary. I, I, I forgot about it. It's been a while since so I've seen it, but excellent documentary, no yeah. doubt. The, the Legend of Super Mitch, uh, Stories in Rhyme, and Tennessee Whiskey. There's your three good ones. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to do a couple of uh, This Week in Country Music, and we'll get on out of here. I uh, thought this was pretty cool. On um, uh, This Week in Oneonta, New York, was uh, born Mr. Jerry Jeff Walker, one of my favorite Texas singers. Uh, he moved down to Texas and – End up changing that whole outlaw thing. So you know him for songs like Mr. Bojangles and L.A. Freeway. Um, he was a lead figure in the outlaw country music movement. He actually passed away of cancer, of throat cancer, uh, in uh, October 23rd last year at 78 years old. Uh, and this, this week in country music in 1951, during recording sessions at Castle Studio in Nashville, Hank Williams recorded I Can't Help It If I'm Still In Love With You and Hey Good Looking. Since its original recording, Hagen Lookin' has been covered by a variety of artists, including Ray Charles, on his 1962 album, Modern Sounds in Country and Western Music, which might have to be one of the greatest country albums of all time, just putting that out there. If you've never yeah. heard Ray yeah. Charles' Modern Sounds of Country Music, I mean, it's Ray Charles singing country standards. I mean, are you kidding me? Um, also, uh, in 1951, another um, uh, uh, staple in the Texas music scene uh, was Mr. Ray Benson from Asleep in the Wheel. Uh, who's won nine Grammys in his career. He was born this week. Uh, and also this week, in 1971, Johnny Cash won him a Grammy for If I Were a Carpenter, which is a classic tune. Uh, and uh, the last one of those this week, uh, in 1974 was the initial uh, official opening. This was the official opening week in 1974 of the Opry House, uh, which is now at an Opry Land. It was Opry Land then, but that's the first time they moved it from the Ryman and put the show at the Opry House was in 1974 with Minnie Pearl. Wow. And, um, Howdy! Uh, Howdy! And, uh, uh, I mean, just have, think about all the things that have happened there in the Ryman. Just, that was, I just thought that was pretty cool, so drop that on y'all. I didn't realize it, that had been there that long. I would have thought it was a little more recent. Yeah, me too, kind of. That's just 50 years this year. Yeah, you think of 74 out there where it's at now? I thought I mean, you said 71, but um, oh, either way, it's a long, long time. Yeah, 74. The Grand Ole Opry moved from the Ryman Auditorium, its home of the past 41 years, to the newly built 4,400-seat Grand Old Opry House on Opryland Complex. President Richard Nixon was a guest at the Ryman's last show. Wow. So, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. I would have thought cool. maybe 80s or so maybe, but no, nope, that was it. 74, the Opry. So anyway, well, hey, other this. thing I want to yeah. note because I know you will love this. Um, uh, we're recording this um, on the sixteenth, uh, March sixteenth, uh, which is Stone Cold Day. Yep, three sixteen. Three sixteen. Tomorrow is St. Patty's Day, so you what? guys be safe, have fun, what? but be safe. Drink some green beer for us. Um, and uh, so, just a couple of things of note there. Yeah, drink some um, and for it's me. Also, it's going to be another few days before I probably have one. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, exactly. And today is uh, KB's birthday. Kennedy Barrett, my oh, oldest daughter's best friend. So happy buddy. birthday! She's eleven today. Happy birthday to to her. Happy birthday, KB. So. Yeah, one of my faves. Longtime buddy, KB. Golly, don't break nothing. Having too much fun on your birthday, KB. <laughs> All right, guys. So, well, thank y'all for anyway. tuning in this week to Season 3, Episode 6 of the Justin Moore Podcast. We appreciate y'all tuning in with us every week. And, uh, man, couldn't, couldn't have had more fun on the road. And look forward to coming back with another episode next week. Y'all all remember to like, subscribe, uh, hit that notification button, download it. If you get your friend's phone or computer by, by chance, 
dial them in and make them download it and let them subscribe too because uh, all that stuff really helps the podcast grow and we can continue to keep doing this for you guys uh, for years to come hey also want to thank you guys for the great questions today um we have been saving a bunch of them up so hopefully you got your question answered keep sending those in with the hashtag justin moore podcast thanks so much again for tuning in watching all that great stuff and uh we'll see you next week hopefully uh it's roll tide pig suey still in march madness the ncaa tournament we're talking about uh sweet 16 matchups Absolutely. Looking forward to it, buddy. Have a, have a good rest next couple days. We'll talk soon. We'll see you guys here next week on the Justin Moore Podcast. For any of you first-time listeners out there, at the end of each of our episodes, uh, I like to do a little reading out of a book I've had that I've got a lot of use out of over the years. Uh, the book is by Mr. Charlie Daniels, uh, and the book is called Let's All Make the Day Count, The Everyday Wisdom of Charlie Daniels. Our Attitudes, Making the Most of Your Time, because the days are evil. Ephesians 5.16 Over the years, I have come to the conclusion that much of our outcomes of our lives are controlled by our attitudes. The half-full or half-empty glass, the acceptance of responsibility for our own well-being, willingness to blame our problems on outside influences. I know, of course, things will happen that are beyond our control, but so much of our lives are within our own ability to affect what we do with our God-given talent, how we face the problems we're confronted with, and how we choose to view each day is up to us. Is it just another 24-hour period, or is it another opportunity, another chance to move forward, a reason to rejoice? Do we allow ourselves to start thinking that no matter what we do, no matter how long we try, things will never get any better, and we may as well save our efforts? Nothing can be further from the truth. Start out the day being thankful that our Creator has granted another day of your life. You are in His unique creation, and He has something better for you. Then put aside all the negative thoughts you've been thinking and start looking forward. How we choose to perceive things, thinking for ourselves, making a conscious choice to look at all sides of a situation before we judge it, trying to approach life with a positive attitude, having patience and understanding can all make such an incredible difference. Positive or negative, it's your choice. Every breath is a blessing, every heartbeat is a godsend, and every day an act of God's grace. Let's all make the day count.